Welcome to Ichthyology class. My name is Dave. I'm here at what we call the Fish Cave here at Montana Wild, the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Education Center in Helena. And we're going to talk about some different fish as part of our ichthyology class. And ichthyology is nothing more than the fancy word that means uh, studying fish. So our fish today as part of the ichthyology lesson. Um, Actually, it's more than one fish. It's a family or it's a group of fish, the trout family. This is one that a lot of people recognize. They know what these are. And it's really one of the most famous um, fish groups that we have in Montana. This is one of the things that Montana is known for. Even though it's not just trout, there are also salmon in the family and some other whitefish and things like that. Combined, all of those together, we call the Salmonidae family. So the trout and salmon family kind of combined. Um, there's not just one kind, of course, so I think we'll maybe even give you a little quiz as part of this. Um, but first of all, the basics on, on the Salmonid family. The, in the whole world, at least, there's probably, I don't know exactly, I'm guessing more than 50 different types of trout and salmon. Here in Montana, uh, we have 16 different types of trout and salmon. And some of them are things people know about, rainbow trout and brown trout and cutthroat trout. Some of them are things like lake whitefish and pygmy whitefish, and cisco, and kokanee salmon, and things like that, that not everybody is uh, even close to being as familiar with. One of the words, though, when we talk about all these different types of trout or salmon, one of the important kind of vocabulary words you want to be familiar with is we refer to some of these fish as being native, and some of these fish we say are introduced. So it's a pretty big distinction. When we talk about a fish that's native, that means a type of trout or a type of fish that's always been found somewhere. They were never brought there by humans. They were never released before. It's just if you would have went there a thousand years ago, um, we would have had that particular type of fish that's been there. A lot of the really popular fish in Montana that people fish for, like this one, a rainbow trout, I'll give it away right away, um, are fish that 200 years ago in Montana, we didn't have rainbow trout. We have had a little type of a subspecies, but everywhere else, in 99% of the state, there were no rainbow trout. So it's one that was brought here from other states, released, and now they're, they're pretty common, which in some cases works out well. In some cases, people bring in fish or animals and release them, and they cause all kinds of problems. So we don't generally bring in and release, in most cases, it's illegal. In fact, it's illegal to take fish and move them around the state from place to place uh, just because of the damage that it can cause. So I kind of promised we were going to do a little bit of a trout quiz because there's so many fish to talk about. I can't just talk about all of them. We already said this one's a rainbow. And all the trout generally have spots on their body. They have this little fin. They have a dorsal fin and they have a caudal fin or a tail back here. But in between, it's hard to see, there's this little fin called an adipose fin. It's kind of shaped like your thumb pointing backwards. That's a good giveaway that a fish is in the trout family. The real one though is the spots, the big eyes, the big mouth. Um, and this particular one with the pink stripe on the side is a rainbow trout. And it's actually, a little trivia, it's the most popular type of fish in Montana during the summer months. In the winter, it's a different type of fish, but in the summer, more people fish for rainbow trout than anything else. And we already said rainbow trout are not native. They were brought here a little over 100 years ago. They're really widespread, really popular fish now. Let's look at another one. Back to the wall with him. Spots, big eyes, adipose fin there in its back. Um, this fish, if you haven't guessed, is a brown trout. And brown trout are not, also not native to Montana. In fact, a lot of uh, people still refer to these as German brown trout. They're from Europe. So they were brought here again a little over 100 years ago and released. Uh, now they're widespread. They're all around Helena. We have the fish here in Spring Meadow or in the Missouri River or Prickly Pear Creek. You can catch brown trout like this one. Really colorful looking fish. Again, all the trout characteristics, adipose fin, spots, big eyes. Um, this one is called a brook trout. An eastern brook trout is the full scientific name because it is from the eastern United States, which should be a hint that this is, again, not a native fish in Montana. Um, this would be a big brook trout. They don't get as big as some of those others, like rainbows and browns, but they're real pretty. White edges on their fins, uh, especially when they spawn or lay their eggs. These fish get super colorful get big hook jaws so the, 
the males can fight over the females with that and um, kind of a neat fish. Not a native fish though. So let's look at one of our native fish. This is one that we have right here around Helena uh, with the great big dorsal fin on its back. Doesn't have the name trout as part of its family. It's actually an arctic grayling. And Montana is one of the only states left that still have arctic grayling. Everywhere else the water has gotten too warm for the uh, arctic. It gives you a sense they need cold water. Uh, they don't survive anywhere else. We've got them right around Helena. If you take a drive up to Park Lake, just 20 miles or so outside of Helena, you can catch arctic grayling. Never mistake them with that great big dorsal fin on their back. This would be a big one. Usually they're about half this size. Arctic grayling. Uh, so again, one of our native fish. Finally, we have native fish to show you. And the last of the trout replicas, these are all fiberglass fish, but here's the, the last one that I've got handy to show you. This one um, is a really important one. Everybody in Montana needs to be able to identify this fish. The way you would identify it is by turning it upside down and looking underneath its jaw. You should see two red slash marks underneath there. That is a giveaway, an easy giveaway for a fish called the cutthroat trout. Looks like somebody took a knife and cut its throat. Uh, you see a fish like that, it's a cutthroat. Why is it important? Well, first of all, it's native. These were here for thousands of years. Um, they were first named, given the name cutthroat, by Lewis and Clark. Although the Native Americans that were here you know, for thousands of years, they certainly knew about these long before Lewis and Clark. But Lewis and Clark, when they came up the Missouri River, got to the Great Falls of the Missouri River in the city of what's now Great Falls. They started to catch loads and loads of these fish. And they said, we're going to name this one. Never heard of them before, but it's got those red marks. We're going to call it a cutthroat trout. The important thing now, uh, I think it was in about 1977, uh, Montana actually held a vote, I think it was just with the fifth graders in the state, voted and they chose this one to be our state fish. So along with the grizzly bears, the state animal, and the ponderosa pine tree is the state tree, the cutthroat trout, a native fish, is our state fish for Montana. All these fish, whether they're native or, or not native, They've got those characteristics that we talked about, the fins and the mouth and the spots. Um, they all have the same requirements too. They all need good habitat. And habitat's the key word that describes the place where an animal lives, where it gets its food and its water and its shelter. And for a fish, you gotta think, water's probably the most important part of that habitat. And for a trout, cold, clean water is really, really important. We classify trout, if you're an ichthyologist, this is classified as a cold water fish. They can't survive in warm water. Where a fish like a catfish or a bass, um, they do just fine in really warm water. Trout die if the water gets too warm. Um, the habitat quality goes down. If it's not good habitat, they can't survive there. So we have lots of good cold water habitat right around Helena, the Missouri River, Prickly Pear Creek, Park Lake we already talked about, Ten Mile Creek, places within just a few miles of the schools where you guys are that have really good numbers and really good habitat, uh, really good places to catch fish. A lot of people wonder, or they catch a fish like this and they say, wow, is this a trout that came from a fish hatchery? Or they just assume every trout comes from a fish hatchery because in a lot of states in the United States, every trout that you catch comes from a fish hatchery. And a fish hatchery is a place where they take the trout eggs, they hatch the eggs, they grow the trout up to you know, different sizes, and then they let them go. And we do have hatcheries here in Montana, um, but if you go to a river, if you go to Prickly Pear Creek, or Ten Mile Creek, or the Missouri River, or the Madison River, and you catch a trout, it's a wild trout. That means it did not ever come from a hatchery. It started out its life as an egg in that river or stream, grew up there, and it'll lay its own eggs. Um, however, though, if you go to a place like Spring Meadow Lake, right here at Montana Wild, or Canyon Ferry Lake, or Park Lake, you're, and you catch a fish, a trout there, that trout is likely a fish that came from a hatchery. And the reason is those trout need, their eggs need moving water. They have to have flowing water constantly going back and forth over the eggs to keep oxygen going into the eggs. And in the rivers and ponds, or in the, sorry, in the lakes and ponds in Montana, we don't have enough current that's moving to keep those eggs, the eggs can't survive. So in those cases, they take the little tiny fish from the hatcheries, put them into the into Canyon Ferry Reservoir or Spring Meadow Lake, 
and they grow really quick. And after a few years, sometimes just a year or two, they're as big as this one and um, people catch them and they're, again, super, super popular fish. So it's kind of hard to keep all those terms straight. There's wild fish and there's hatchery fish and there's native fish and there's introduced fish. But if you kind of know what's going on and you know a little bit about them, um, tells you a lot about some of the fish here in Montana. And again, the trout family, the salmonid family, the trout salmon family in Montana, 16 members. Doesn't matter whether they come from a hatchery or if they're wild or not, they're still lots of fun to catch. They're popular. Some people like to eat them. Some people like to take their picture and let them go. Either way, it's a fish you should know about, especially this one again, the cutthroat. And remember why? It's the state fish of Montana, kind of the most special best representative fish for anything here in the whole state. So hope you uh, learned a little bit. If this is the fish that you're studying, hope you uh, can put that to good use and I hope you go out one of these times, whether it's in the winter or the summer, catch one of these for yourself and get a look at our state fish. Thanks for watching here today.